Hello everybody and welcome to another lesson on learning Wagtail. In this lesson we are going to be adding some content to our homepage. Now we've done quite a bit already. We have our base site set up. So we always have a footer, we always have a navigation, uh, we have all sorts of things that are working on every single page, but we don't have anything that actually works on an individual page. Every page just says, hello world, right? Go to my famously typoed page names and it all just says the same thing. And that's, that's just no bueno, that's no way to live your life. And honestly, without the ability to change this, what's the point of having a content management system? So in this lesson, we are going to add some stuff. First things first, I wanna look at the original design here. So we have an image, we have a title, that already comes with the Wagtail page. We have a, uh, a subtitle or some sort of summary. And then we have what looks like a call to action. So maybe a button that goes to another page or another URL. Then we have my story, and this could be rich text. And then we have blog posts in here. And then we have my projects. So this is actually gonna be pretty easy. So it seems like there's a lot of things, but there's just a whole bunch of small things. Let's just start with right up here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my editors and I'm gonna go into the original file where uh, we have this header right here and I'm gonna go into my project and open up homepage.html. And this is where my content is going to go. And what am I looking at here? Really all I wanna do is make sure that this is going to work, I guess at this point. So let's do a quick little check. In fact, it is working. The image does not work, but we're gonna replace that anyways title and all that other stuff is there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to the page.title. Uh, we are going to load Wagtail images tags, but we're gonna have to spell that right. And in here we can have uh, an image, which is going to be, let's say page dot, I don't know, author image. Uh, we need to kind of figure out what that size is ideally supposed to be as well. Let's go in here and inspect. And we're gonna see it's a 64 by 64. That's perfect, so we want that to be a square. So we're gonna say fill 64 by 64. And class is going to be, we're literally just gonna throw this class in there. Do, 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 do. And cool, we're gonna see that this 100% is not going to work, which doesn't show up. Uh, and the reason for that is because we don't have page.author yet. We also don't have page.summary or, or page.subtitle or page.intro, whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it summary, I guess. And then in here is a link. And we're going to need to say, if this link exists, show it. Otherwise, don't show it. Uh, so let's just go back to our models real quick. So we're going to go to home models.py, and this comes with your Wagtail page, or your Wagtail website, rather. And we are simply going to add a field in here for the image and the subtitle, just to begin. So we're gonna say the image, or what do we call that, actually? We call that the author image. The author image is going to be a foreign key, which goes to wagtailimages.image. Null is going to be true. Blank is gonna be true. When that image is deleted, if it is ever deleted, what happens? We're gonna set this value to null, which is why null is allowed to be true. The related name doesn't really matter, and we're going to end that. Then we need to add page summary. The title already exists, but we need a page summary in there. So we're gonna say summary is equal to, now we could add a rich text field, we could add a standard text field, we could add a character field, we have a few different options here. I'm simply gonna go with a text field. Maybe I want this to be rather long, rather than a little bit short. If you just want it to be short, character field, maximum somewhere around 255, 256 characters, a character field is fine. But if you want the option to have something longer and maybe set a max length to, let's say 500, then a text field is gonna be best. We always add our content panels in a Wagtail page, and we always inherit those panels from the page itself. So when I right click, go to definition, this is the actual page in the source code. You can see we have a title, a draft title, a slug, content type. We have all sorts of stuff in here. And we're not gonna go too much into that right now, but there are a lot of different fields which you have access to. So we're gonna say those content panels, which allow you to actually edit the page or edit certain fields in the page, in your admin, 
uh, we're going to say give us all the regular ones and we're also going to use a field panel for the author image and we're also going to add a field panel for the summary. Now I'm using Wagtail 6 at this point. If you're using an older version of Wagtail, you usually use an image chooser panel, but that has thankfully been replaced and simplified with simply a field panel. Let's go ahead and import from Wagtail admin dot panels, import field panel, and away we go. Let's open up our terminal. Let's go ahead, make migrations. Now we might have to do this a few times because we're doing this in pieces. If you're a little more skilled with Django or Wagtail, you can do this all in one massive migration. I'm going to do it in pieces just to keep it nice and simple. You know, refresh this home page, click down here. I'm already logged in. Edit this page. Look at that. I can choose an author image and I can choose a summary. So I'm going to choose that standard image there. And I'm going to throw some lorem ipsum in here as well. Now I'm going to publish this page and just refresh. Home, if a link exists, we haven't added that yet. We've got some lorem ipsum. So maybe let's actually change that home to, hi, I'm Caleb. Doo, 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 doo. Hi, I'm Caleb. Bunch of lorem ipsum in there. Then we have to work with this CTA, this call to action. So essentially we want to say, if this exists, we will then show it on the page. What does that look like in the actual code? We're going to want some sort of call to action text. And yeah, that can be a character field. Maybe the text should only be at most, let's say 50 characters. Can it be blank? Yeah, it can be blank. It's optional. Then we're going to say uh, a CTA page. Hmm. We have a couple of options here. So we can add a foreign key. And this could go to a Wagtail core page, which is another page of any kind. Uh, we can make that optional as well. Uh, and we can also, if we wanted to, CTA URL is a URL field. And then in our template, we could say, if there's a page, go to that one. If there is a URL field, go to that one. In fact, actually, yeah, let's do that. That's going to be uh, a little more complex. And uh, it, it's easy enough to add, um, but not so complex that it's going to blow anyone's minds. Hopefully. I'm not here to blow minds. I'm here to uh, hopefully help educate about Wagtail. So we have a CTA field. Actually, we've got three of them. I'm going to move my content panels down just because I like them below my fields. And I'm simply boop, 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 going to copy these over. We've got a CTA text, boop, CTA page, CTA URL. I paste the URL. We're going to paste the page. We are going to paste the text. Now, we can add some help text in here. If you're building this for another person, they might not know if the page is going to be used or the URL is going to be used. Also, if you're interested in custom validation to make sure that the page is only ever set or the URL is ever set, like they can't be set at the same time or they can't both be empty at the same time, we can add some extra validation. Uh, you can learn all about that in the Ultimate Wagtail Developers course. We learn all about validation with pages and stream fields. Uh, so that would be a helpful thing to usually learn on more complex websites, but this one's pretty straightforward, so you probably don't need that. Let's go ahead. We're going to make migrations, make, make migrations. My, migrate, my, my, migrate. There we go. Cool, 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 cool. Let's go ahead and edit our page again. We are now going to see we have CTA text. I'm going to say, this is a button. And this button is going to go to another page called sample one. And the CTA URL is going to be HTTPS learnwagtail.com. And we're just going to see how this works. So that data is now saved in our database. In our template, we may want to have some conditions. For instance, we might want to say, if the page.cta URL or the page.cta page, then we can put it in here. I'm going to just do some magic indenting because I like this in here. And then we can say, ooh, actually, because that's optional too, right? We said the CTA text is in fact optional. Yep. So we're going to say, if the page.cta text exists, page.cta text, otherwise, we are going to, I uh, sure fill it with read more as a default. Now we could, we could hard code that in here, or we could also say the default is do 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 in here. Default is equal to 
read more. They will serve the same purpose, but the user experience will be a little bit different since this can be blank. Uh, they could just remove that default and we'd still have to do this anyway. So I'm kind of bypassing a little bit of that. Uh, and then this URL needs to be if page.cta page, I guess we'll do it that way. We can add page.cta page.url because any page, <laughs> We have a CTA page, that's where I'm getting that from. It's a foreign key to a wagtail page. When we look at a page model, we have URL is equal to the full URL. Do, 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 do. Let's say de def, there you are. URL is a property of get URL. Let's do def get URL. We're gonna find this, where are you? And this is the source code for getting that URL. Luckily, we don't have to interpret this on our own. Wagtail just magically does it for us, that's lovely. But that's where I'm getting CTA page dot URL. Now we can say else we know that either the page is going to be fulfilled or the CTA URL is going to be filled, and that is a URL field, so that's going to be plain text. Page dot CTA URL and if. Now there is a better way to live life. This is getting to be quite a bit of logic for something so simple, but let's uh, let's just see how this works first. This is a button, I click it, it goes to sample one. Perfect, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Now to show how simple this can be, uh, what we can do is in our models, instead of saying like in our page, if there's a page CTA URL or, or CTA page, we can add a couple of properties in here or functions if we wanted to. So we're gonna say, at property, this is just standard Python at this point. Def has CTA link, I guess we could call it that. This is object oriented programming. Uh, so it always takes self as the first parameter. And then we're going to say return self dot page CTA page dot URL. Uh, or mm, that's not quite what I want actually. Very close copilot, not quite. So we're gonna say if self.cta page, and this is just gonna be a little bit easier to read, return self.cta page.url, elif, if there is a CTA URL, then we're gonna return the URL. So we're gonna look for this page. If it doesn't exist, it's gonna look for this URL. If it doesn't exist, then we say return none. And instead of maybe has CTA link, Let's just call it CTA link because we're not returning a true or false. We're going to return string or nothing. And then in here we can say if page dot CTA link and right in here we can do page dot CTA link. And let's just make sure that I did that right. We don't have any typos. If I refresh the page, it'll look like nothing happened and it still works. That is perfect. We can do the same thing with the text as well. We can do do, 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 do add property. And what I'm gonna do is just put it up here. Return uh, self.cta text if self.cta text. Otherwise, read more. And CTA text might actually, yeah, that might possibly conflict. I don't know. And I don't really want to test it out live on a video. Uh, so we're going to, we're just going to call this mm, button text, probably not the greatest naming convention, but we're going to go with that to make things easier. And we can simply type page dot button text. And again, if I refresh this page here, <laughs> looks like nothing happened. Perfect. So we just cleaned up some of that logic. All right, moving on, moving on. What do we have next? We have our story area, which I think I'm gonna put in the next video because this is getting a little bit long. So this will be actually super quick to add, very similar to what we just did. Uh, this is gonna be a little more involved, but we've actually done most of the work already in a couple of other videos. Uh, and, and we're not really gonna do anything with this because that's gonna be part of your homework. So uh, head on over to the next video for part two.